major part of the evidence that a big change is happening is found in the sharp increase in earthquakes that began when the dimming of the sun began that the Ulysses spacecraft had reported. A tight connection exists between the two phenomena. With the sun being surrounded by a dense field of electric plasma particles which at its surface power its luminance, the sun also accumulates plasma in the never-ending electric rain upon it. With the plasma particles being 100,000 times smaller than all atoms are, the sun absorbs vast quantities of plasma in the form of protons. However, protons have a positive electric charge by which they repel each other. The repulsion establishes a limit to the plasma density that the sun can absorb. The limit is determined by the external incoming plasma pressure. When this external pressure weakens, whereby the sun also becomes dimmer, the internal pressure can no longer be contained and becomes vented into space in the form of erupting coronal mass ejections. While mass ejections are a normal means for the sun to maintain its plasma pressure equilibrium, the mass ejections tend to increase when the external pressure is sharply reduced that the Ulysses spacecraft saw the beginning of. For us on Earth, this means that the earthquakes are increasing. The mass ejections are plasma showers erupting on a scale that dwarfs our Earth. If parts of these showers hit our Earth, they accumulate in the ground at whatever depths they can penetrate to. There, deep in the ground, the same electric pressure builds up that had ejected the plasma particles from the sun in the first place. The solar plasma pressure flowing into the Earth causes correspondingly large electric stress phenomena to build up in the ground by the electric force that is 36 orders of magnitude stronger than gravity. Large stress explosions can occur thereby, resulting in large earthquakes and related events, and a sharp increase in the number of the events as the Ice Age transition unfolds. The actual rate of increase is likely less than shown, as the historic numbers of earthquakes recorded is probably incomplete. Also, the increase is still getting larger from 2000 on to the present. This is what we need to prepare our world for in the increasingly necessary strategic defense of humanity during the coming Ice Age transition. And even in the weaker sun, the number of earthquakes is increasing with the downturn of the solar activity cycle. In the USA, the number of earthquakes per year doubled during the time frame in which the weakening of the sun began. Since a sharp increase in the number of earthquakes has occurred, coincident with the sun getting weaker, 
for which no end appears in sight, we face the task to prepare our world for the continuing increase in earthquake activity. The strategic defense of humanity thus becomes ever more necessary as we enter deeper into the coming Ice Age transition that appears to be already at its beginning stage. The sharp increase in earthquakes that has been experienced since Ulysses observed the weakening of the sun may well be the most measurable precursor that we can get that a major astrophysical transition is in progress that matches what is known about the dynamics of the Ice Age transition. As I said, that when the situation arises that the external plasma pressure around a sun is weaker than the internal pressure, which results in a weaker sun, a portion of the internal pressure is vented into space in the form of explosive mass ejections until a lower equilibrium is established. This is a natural process in the solar dynamics and a critical one for any sun, because if these ejections did not occur, the sun would eventually explode by the built-up electric stress. Such electric stress explosions do actually happen, though only extremely rarely. It is highly likely that the famous supernova events or rare extreme events of this type of explosive electric stress fracturing. Such events would happen when enormously large plasma pressure bears down on a star, so that the eternal electric stress pressures overpower the gravity of the star. The Grab Nebula may have resulted from such a process of electric stress explosion. The Grab Nebula is known to be a hotbed of intense electric activities. The Grab's remarkable combined luminance is 70,000 times greater than the luminance of our Sun. In lesser cases, when extreme plasma pressures build up in a star, which corresponds with great electric stress inside the star. The overstressed star merely splits apart into binary, triple, or quadruple star systems. The resulting electric stress division appears to be not uncommon among stars, to the point that astronomers now suggest that single star systems like our own solar system, might actually be the minority in the galaxies, or at least in our galaxy. Large coronal mass ejections are therefore healthy for a sun. They occur at their largest when the electric environment around the sun becomes weaker, so that a lower equilibrium needs to be established as in the case of our Sun during an Ice Age transition period. During the weakening phase, the Sun will vent or eject large portions of its built-up mass in the form of large solar flares. While even the most gigantic of these resulting large mass ejection events are nevertheless small events in the larger context of stellar dynamics, they are large enough to cause enormous effects on our Earth, where the electric force builds up with ever more solar flares hitting the Earth, whereby the ejected storms of solar protons cut deep into the ground. As a result, very large electric stress forces exist in the ground. When a major solar flare adds still another shower to this background, this may be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Most earthquakes thereby appear to be triggered by electric stress phenomena that, in some cases, occur over large areas. 
closely timed relationships have been evident between increases in earthquakes and the weakening of the sun that the Ulysses satellite had measured. The strategic defense of humanity from the coming Ice Age transition therefore needs to focus on the earthquake factor as also a major factor for the immediate time ahead, because the dynamics involved suggest that we haven't seen anything yet on this front. If the current increase in earthquakes and volcanism is an indication of things to come, we evidently need to reconsider the way we build cities and infrastructures and power-generating systems. Enormously tall dams have been built, some twice as tall as the Great Pyramid in Egypt, holding back enormous volumes of water. How vulnerable will they be in our world of rapidly increasing earthquakes? Indeed, how vulnerable will our tall cities be? We have no historic data about what to expect in earthquake activity during the transition period as the sun is becoming weaker. The last such period was over 100,000 years ago. The modern decapitated science prevents the requisite questions from being asked, while the little that we already see speaks volumes in spite of the blindness imposed by decapitated science. The linkage between solar mass ejections and earthquakes is graphically evident in the records produced by the induction magnetometer in Gakona, Alaska, that is the most sensitive instrument of its type in the world. It registered some enormously intense, extremely low-frequency inductions just prior to the big earthquake in Haiti in 2010. Likewise, prior to the giant earthquake in Japan in 2011, the same induction, only larger this time, was seen again for several hours leading up to the earthquake catastrophe. These two events linked with the weakening of the sun that is just in the faintest beginning, scream to us that we haven't seen anything yet. However, this, which we have not yet seen, is what we need to prepare for. It is interesting to note in this context that five great historic mass extinction events occurred at or near major and at times gigantic temperature downswings. These would be times of the sun venting plasma in a big way to establish its plasma pressure equilibrium. Consequently, these would be times of enormous electric stresses in the crust of the Earth with correspondingly large earthquakes and massive volcanic activity occurring, accompanied by a build-up of enormous electric potential between the ground and the ionosphere that may have resulted in electric discharge events of gigantic proportions, as could have ripped open the mantle of the Earth to cause the immense flood basalt eruptions that have occurred during the extinction time frames that could also have excavated the craters that are often deemed to be impact craters rather than discharge craters, like the Chicolopes crater in Mexico. It has been suggested by researchers familiar with electric discharge machining that the Grand Canyon was evidently excavated by a single electric discharge event and by a minor one comparatively. All the expected electric features are present in the canyon features. 
while the coming Ice Age transition promises to be minuscule in comparison. We should nevertheless anticipate unprecedented volcanism and earthquakes, whatever this might mean. The huge task of creating an Ice Age Renaissance on the needed scale for the strategic defense of mankind literally demands us to develop our inner resources as human beings to levels not yet imagined. In order to meet the challenge the universe presents to us. Sure, the challenge cannot be met physically, technologically, and economically in a decapitated world, but will we break out from it? This is a spiritual and cultural question. Can society break away from its empire dream of stealing riches from one another that develops poverty and impotence. The Ice Age challenge should help us out of this dream, as the needs for the future should jolt us to attention. It is tempting to say in the current impoverished dream state that the world's development project cannot be carried out because we don't have the energy resources to do it. This is true indeed in a decapitated world, but not in the real world. In the real world, we have infinite energy resources laying at our feet, unacknowledged and unused. <laughs>